Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now, perhaps you watched a fairly interesting video this week. Uh, it's called Exposing Fraud and Deception in the Retro Video Game Market by Carl Jobst. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I apologize if I butchered that. But basically what this video is, if you haven't seen it, it's a fairly deep dive expose into an alleged scam between WADA Games and Heritage Auctions. Now, if you're not familiar with WADA Games, they are the company, they're one of two companies that is going out there and grading sealed retro games. And this video very systematically and very methodically goes through and shows just how, how these two companies and a lot of the people that are involved with them seem to be artificially manipulating that particular market. Uh, it's an incredibly, wow, it's an incredibly interesting video. It's incredibly damning. It's, um, it's a fascinating watch. Actually, it reminded me of watching an episode of 60 Minutes where they deep dive into some conspiracies and things like that. Uh, it's fascinating. Um, I will say though that it is changing all the time. The video is not very old, yet it has 600,000 views, at least as of the making of this video. It's spreading like wild, wildfire. But uh, if you're interested in this, I would highly recommend you follow the Twitter account of that, that YouTuber because already he's had some official responses from a lot of the people that are, are being talked about in that video. And it looks like several big news organizations are probably going to dig even deeper into it. So uh, I suspect that there will be a lot more information about this coming soon. But the reason why I wanted to do this video is because so many people reached out to me and asked me about it and wanted to know my thoughts on it. So that's what this video is gonna be. But I'll be honest with you, initially I was not that interested in this whole story. I mean, I, I didn't know the details of it, but essentially when I first saw the, the, the video come through, people suggested, I was like, man, I'm not a buyer or seller of graded, sealed retro games. <laughs> I'm not in that world at all. I don't even care about that world, to be quite honest with you. And so initially I was just like, eh, nah, that's okay. I mean, I'll, I'll watch it eventually, but, but then something really interesting happened to me very recently. So you guys know that I love going to garage sales. Well, I went to one last weekend and I, I, I arrived a little bit late and I, I looked around and I didn't see any video games. So I asked the lady who was running the garage sale, it was her house. And I was like, are there any video games in the back? She's like, no. She's like, somebody just came through and bought all of them about an hour ago. That happens occasionally. You know, it sucks, but hey, the early bird gets the worm, right? But then she said something I've never heard somebody say before. Uh, she was like, yeah, I've heard that retro games are really collectible. And there was this Mario game on PlayStation or something sold for millions of dollars. And, you know, when she said that, I was like, woo, like my, my blood went cold a little bit. I'll be honest with you because that Mario story that that video is about and the potential scam and the market manipulation that is happening or allegedly is happening made all the newspapers. I mean, yes, it was out in the retro gaming community, but it, you know, I saw it actually on USA Today. Uh, it made the Washington Post, the New York Times. I mean, it was everywhere, which means that average people who don't care about video games are suddenly thinking that there's a gold mine there. And when you are standing at a garage sale, like I do, trying to get a good deal on stuff, that is a, that's a bit of an eye opener for sure. And so I knew things at that point, they had changed for sure. Now, a couple of takeaways from that though, I do wanna say. The first one being, and he, he makes this in this video, is that a lot of the problems that are going on with that market, again, Admittedly, most of us watching this video probably don't really care about it, but in general, when there are companies that grade stuff, supposedly, I, again, I don't really pay attention to it, but he talks about it, that you would have a population report, meaning that the companies that grade games or things like, 
you know, baseball cards or VHS tapes or whatever, they will put out what's called a population report. That way, potential buyers will know how many copies of the thing that they've graded are out there. Because I think a lot of us who are watching that, that news story about Mario's and Zelda's and all these fairly popular common games, we're kind of like, aren't there thousands of copies of this out there? You know, they, he uses an example of the Spider-Man game that came out on the Atari 2600. And I gotta be honest with you, when I heard how much that sealed copy went for, I was like, no, I don't have a sealed copy of it. But I was like, well, I gotta, I gotta open really great copy of that game because it's not rare. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's, there's lots of them out there. And sure enough in the video, he shares that when that happened, all of a sudden, all of these other copies of WADA graded games suddenly appeared on the market because yeah, they've graded a lot of them. And so at the very least, it does seem to make sense that the WADA and also VGA games should, or VGA, the company that also grades games should probably put out population reports. That just seems to make sense to me. If I was going to be, jump into that market, uh, that I would want to know how many graded games are out there. You know, if there's one, great. If there's 2,000 of them, well, that changes everything, doesn't it? So at the very least, I think they should absolutely do that. The other thing he talks about is the coin market, the collectible coin market, and how that had a very similar rise and then potential fall. Now, he did that because there seems to be some people who were involved in the manipulation of that market who are in in cahoots with the retro video game market. Um, so that was a very interesting tie, but I don't think they're necessarily the same and perhaps you might feel the same way. You know, when I was a kid, my grandma used to have, uh, she would buy me stamps. And so she started, the very first thing I collected actually as a young, young kid was stamps. And I had no emotional attachment to them whatsoever. It was cool to get, but I didn't really care. And I suspect that coin collecting is very similar to that. You may have a, a, an emotional, nostalgic connection to a coin, but I suspect that the connection to retro games is stronger. And so I, I see where he's going with that. But even with like, say, baseball cards, I think it might be somewhat, you know, like, it, I, I, I guess what I'm wondering is that, you know, I do feel like, especially in my life and the people that I know, we have a much stronger emotional, nostalgic connection to retro games than, than some of those things. And so because of that, I suspect that, you know, again, ignoring the whole graded game thing, because I think that's a whole different thing. But if you talk about sort of like retro game prices and a retro game bu bubble, retro game price bubble. Uh, I, I think that they are definitely different, time will tell, but different than say the coin market of you know the late 80s or the early 90s. That's at least how I feel. And speaking of bubbles, you know, are we in one? Is it gonna pop? That sort of thing. Well, honestly, actually, I think that it's not as simple as that because I think there are multiple bubbles and some of them have already popped. So the way I look at this sort of stuff is by generation, because for instance, yes, GameCube and I don't know, some other consoles are kind of hot right now and, and definitely climbing in price, but some bubbles have already popped. For instance, Atari and television, Coleco, that sort of pre-NES generation seems to have mostly popped. Yes, the prices have increased a little bit, but you and I can still go into a retro gaming store and buy dozens, you know, potentially hundreds of Atari games for a buck to $5 at the most. There are some collectible expensive Atari games, but they're, they are the truly rare, the truly hard to get games. In general though, those bubbles have popped, you know, maybe 20 years ago it was rising, but now they're not. And, and I think that there's a reason for that. And that's again, the nostalgic pull to it, the emotional pull. For instance, and I think a lot of you will relate to this. So, you know, older game collectors like me in the 40s and 50s, if you ask us what we think of Atari, I will tell you, I love Atari. The huge pull there. But if you ask people in their 30s, 
mid thirties or so what they think of Atari, they'd be like, oh yeah, I like Atari. It's okay. If you ask somebody in their teens or twenties in general, I'm being, uh, you know, I'm generalizing here, but if you ask them what they think of Atari, they don't care at all. They, they think it's a baby's toy, right? It's like that scene from back to future two. It's a baby's toy, you know, and I'm already starting to see that on my videos when I cover the N64 and the PlayStation one, I'll get comments now, never happened a couple years ago, but I'm starting to get a lot of comments on those where people are like, oh man, these 3D graphics, they don't hold up at all. Oh, this gameplay is weak. It's rough, you know? A, a younger generation is, look, is looking at those consoles and they don't have those rose colored glasses on. And so, you know, I do think that yeah, that bubble's gonna gonna pop at some point. I think you're gonna be able to find N64 games relatively cheap. You can already find a lot of PS1 games really cheap. There's there's definitely some RPGs and some things that hold up, but man, you know, I think those bubbles are gonna pop for sure. Which leads me to my last two points. The first one being is that I've said this before and I'll say it again. My belief is, and my recommendation for you as a physical game collector is this. When everybody else is going left, go right. Unless you wanna play in that pool where you're competing for games and things like that. I personally love just going the other direction. A great example of that is, is that, you know, I have some people in comments every, you know, every once in a while be like, oh man, I'd never buy an Xbox. Ah, I'm a PlayStation guy. Well, I don't know, maybe you should try getting an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One or you know, a, another console that you're unfamiliar with. You might find a lot of joy in that. You might be surprised. I certainly was. Like 10 years ago or whenever it was, I didn't want a GameCube. You know, didn't get it when it first came out, didn't need one. You know, I had a PS2, I had an original Xbox, I was fine. But I took a chance and bought a cheap, GameCube off of Craigslist with a handful of games. And I was really surprised when I got it home because wow, the games load really fast. They look really good. The GameCube controller is excellent. Some of the exclusives are awesome, you know? So that would be my recommendation. You know, PlayStation 3 today, you can go all day long on Craigslist and find a bunch of PS3s. People, you know, selling them because they don't want them, right? They want the PS4, they want the PS5 or whatever. Get a PS3. You might be surprised that there are a ton of exclusives on there. Yes, some of them are collectible and kind of pricey, but there's also a bunch of other stuff on there that you might be surprised. Again, when everybody else is going for that other console that is hot at the moment, go the other direction. That, you know, that will, that will save you money and it also may surprise you. And then my final point that I want to make is that some people assume because I am a physical game collector that I would be negative or down on emulation. And that is absolutely not the case. I actually am very grateful and I love emulation for many, many reasons. One, I think it is really important to have digital, permanent, forever backups of these games that I consider to be artwork. You know, I, I love them and I love the fact that games from 40 years plus ago can be archived and emulated and ran that way. I think my only caveat is, is that I do find value in those old games and I would, if I had my choice, I do feel like that the original creators should be compensated in many ways like music. I love old music and I have no problem buying old music and if that goes to that creator, the person who created that old album, I have no problem with that because I still think it's great today. So that would be the only thing about emulation. It's not always the case, obviously, but I think that's how I feel about that. Also too, uh, you guys know that I have EverDrives in my collection and I use them because they're again, very convenient. Um, they just work well. They're gonna work forever in the future. That doesn't necessarily mean that it takes away from physical games because I do like physical games. I like the cases, the boxes, the manuals, the little feelies in there, all that extra stuff. I think that's really cool too. That's what makes collecting physical games special. The fact that you can't take them away <laughs> from the from the creator or the uh, the collector. So that's kind of how I feel about about emulation and games. There's man, go for it. You know what I mean? As long as you were playing games 
then that's the way to do it. You know what I mean? Uh, whether you're doing it from the eShop or whatever, uh, I have no problem with it whatsoever, for sure. So. So that's my thoughts on the highly controversial video that was going around this week. And, you know, really this video is about two issues, right? It's that video and that retro gaming market and kind of how it affects the entire world and what they sort of think about retro gaming, but also again, you know, retro game price bubbles. And yeah, it's a crazy time for sure. <laughs> it's a crazy time for sure. Um, I guess at the end of the day, I'm very happy that people even care about retro games. And I think you probably feel the same way too, is that it is pretty awesome that you can be in a mixed group of people. And, you know, maybe 20 years ago, they'd look at you weird because you were into retro games, but today it's cool. You know, everyone's doing it, that sort of thing. So I guess that's a, that's a positive from all this exposure for sure. We'll see though, because I'd sure like to go back to the days of finding good deals at pawn shops, you know, garage sales, things like that. So I think they're still out there. But anyways, guys, I'm sure this is going to generate a ton of uh, conversations down below. Love to uh, read your comments. So, all right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.